Hey there, everyone. It's Jen, the board game librarian, and I'm joined with, it's like I said on Facebook, Indomitable, my partner in crime, Matt, the Dice Chucker. And together, Hi, everybody. We are the Literary Board Gamers. We're continuing on in our quest to do all of the letters. Rate the collection. Today is E, and thankfully, there's only ten. You can all rejoice. Don't knock your beer over. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I've very much done that before. So yes, we're going to rate our 10 e-games. Mm -hmm. And uh, why don't I get started? Sure. Our our number 10 game is Endangered by Grand Gamer Gil Gamers Guild. And a 7.75. I was why I really like the theme on this one. Yeah. Um, you're a bunch of, oh, what do you want to call them? Philanthropists, scientists, uh, environmentalists trying to uh, save endangered species. The base game comes with tigers and koalas. It's going to bother me if I don't get that right. Well, I'll keep talking while Matt looks that up. Um, I, again, I love that theme. Um, otters. 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 Well, yeah, you, you got me with the tigers, of course. Um, I thought it was pretty easy to play. We played it at three players with our friend Mike. Mm -hmm. And we did not win. We barely won. We barely won. Hey, again, like last week. Hey, we won cooperative game. <laughs> <laughs> um... This would maybe be higher, but um, we have only played it once. Right. And uh, with the expansion just leaving Kickstarter now, I think it funded. I think so. Um, with definitely more species, it only it's, it's only going to get higher in the collection. So if we ever revisit this uh, down the line, I would think Endangered's going to climb. Mm-hmm. So number nine is Era Medieval Age at a 7.875. Um, this has a very storied history with us. Um, I got a chance to uh, purchase Roll Through the Ages, the Iron Age, uh, at a, I don't want to call it a blowout sale at the Eagle Griffin booth, but they were getting rid of a lot of their clearance items at Gen Con. Mm -hmm. And I showed it to you and you did not like it. Um, and then I had heard that Roll Through the Ages, the Bronze Age, was easier to understand and easier to jump into. And I found a copy of that, and you did not like it. Those are both understatements. <laughs> uh, and so we ended up getting rid of them. Um, and I heard about this, this game called Era Medieval Age. It was coming out during the Roll and Write craze of 2018, 2019. This came out Gen Con 2019. Um... Where this was roll and build, so you actually have these uh, these little player sheets with you know little, little holes that you take the the buildings and you put them in, and you have walls and scorched areas, and a lot of it is based off of Roll Through the Ages, and we had a chance to talk with Mike Young from Plan B Games, and because um, Eggert Spiel is under Plan B Games, uh, and this is Matt Leacock mm -hmm. designed this, yeah. And uh, he said, if you don't like Roll Through the Ages, you're definitely not going to like Era because it's 90% the same. But somewhere in that 10%... <laughs> That's all it takes, folks. ...was enough that you enjoyed it. Yep. I don't know if it's the fact of picking out the buildings um, and actually physically touching the buildings and putting them on Doesn't the hurt. actual... Hmm. Um, yes, yeah, so the last time we played Roll Through the Ages, Bronze Age, we were at a brewery in Middletown, Connecticut, and um, I very famously said, I hate this game! <laughs> you threw your pencil down on the table. I didn't, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, so this was the last time we tried Roll Through the Ages. Um, and I, I haven't had many outbursts like that with games where no. I've gone, I hate this. Um, I don't know what it is. I never remembered. There were things I never remembered with Rule Through the Ages, and it just... The rule books were weird on Roll Through the Ages. To the point where I had to relearn the game every time we played it. Yeah, we hate that. And we so we recently, we've sold a bunch of games recently, 
and a lot of the ones that we sell i feel like are ones that we have to like relearn the game every single time mm. that's a problem i and you all know that we have a lot of games right. but for something as simple relatively simple as rule through the ages that should not have been a problem no um and this is like the fifth or sixth play attempt to play and we were still like what the heck do we do in this game era is very easily laid out i have no complaints really about any of egger spiel's rule books um no. and it was just very well done and, and a great production there is an expansion coming soon we don't have it yet no it might be over in europe yeah right now no, it's no, over no. there <clears throat> um but yeah era medieval age 7.875 matt leacock Egger spiel games number eight Number eight it has been in our collection a really long time, and we like teaching this to non-gamers um, because a lot of non-gamers have never played a real-time game before, and the soundtrack makes it just even better. I have to dig out the old boombox, <laughs> and that's a Escape, Escape, Curse of the Temple at an eight. There are YouTube videos of the soundtrack if we ever don't have a boombox. Oh, well, I've had that boombox probably since I was 10 years old. Oh, long time. Um, I, we do not have any of the expansions. No, we have just the base yeah. box that came with mini expansions. Yes. And we've still had a blast playing this after owning it for five, six years now. Yeah, long time. And I don't feel like we necessarily have any desire to look at expansions. We talked huh? last week on various occasions about Kickstarter bloat and expansion bloat. Um i'm fine with this the way it is yeah because it's a 10 minute game and i feel like i don't necessarily need more stuff for it right uh we've played it at two we've played it at three we've played it five. five um it's it's really it's a lot of fun even if you lose and we lose often it's just so much fun and chaotic trying to get things done in this game so oh yeah we're yelling and screaming at each other i'm locked and you're like, I'm far away! And then I get locked, oh trying God, to come get you. Me! But this is a Queen Games. And like I said, it's a 10 minute game. Yeah. I, and I also feel like if we got all the expansions, it would take longer to set up the game mm. than it would to play it. Yeah, I agree. This is usually when we also play three times in a row. Oh yeah. Yeah, just sh sh shuffle the tiles and mm -hmm. off we go again. We'll go very long spurts without playing it. This one often comes out for our New Year's um, game marathon. Yeah. I don't know what it is about this time of year that we really enjoy playing it. Uh, but that is Escape, Curse of the Temple. Number seven is a game by Renegade Game Studios called Ex Libris. I feel it's one of their lesser talked about games. Uh, it is an eight. Uh, another one where the name of the designer is escaping me. Um, That's okay. So yeah, Ex Libris is a game about uh, building a library and a grid with your cards and um, making sure that the grid can be supported. You can't have cards kind of hanging because there are shelves of books and they'll just fall down and you're trying to get them in alphabetical order <laughs> and you're trying to get collections of certain ones. And I'm going to stop talking because the librarian should be the one talking about this game. Yeah, did you start talking about this one and be like, Jen should be the one talking about it. Yeah. Uh, no, Matt's done a great job. So Ex Libris, I think, kind of fell by the wayside because when it first came out, a lot of people were, you know what, in and groaning about the very small typeface oh, yeah. on some of the locations. Yep. And I don't disagree. But um, I think everything else in the game makes up for it. I think the punny cards and the punny titles and the titles are all unique. Mm -hmm. um, the adorable artwork and then the gameplay too. You've played this solo, correct? The solo was very good on X, at least for me. I enjoyed the solo. Um, um, and some people just like playing as a gelatinous cube. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, of course, I love Ex Libris, although, I mean, it is number seven. Um, I'm looking ahead to number six and going, what? Um, that has to be your number that boosted yeah, it up. sorry. Um, so, you know, people are like, oh, it's fine. I'm like, 
you're literally like stepping into my shoes here, folks, <laughs> of like putting things in order. Mm -hmm. I, we don't personally do that. We have pages who do that. They shelve. That's what their job is to put things in order. But uh, many librarians start off as an entry level page and then we work our way up. Um, so yes, I think it's really adorable. I've written a whole blog post on it um, and done a whole video on my favorite games that have libraries in them and Ex Libraries was my number one game. A caveat to that, Renegade just came out with kind of a sequel to Ex Libris called Athenaeum, Mystic Library. This one you're not so much trying to put books in order, but just trying to put books on shelves and get points. It's a bit more of a faster Ex Libris. Uh, we had filmed our A's before we got Athenaeum, but that probably would have been on the list too, in A's. So, uh, probably. give uh, Athenaeum a look. It's, it's an interesting game. Number six is Exchange by Bicycle Bicycle Games at an 8.08. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I rate these before you do. You know that. Why don't you talk about this one? Exchange. Right <laughs> <laughs> um, if you like it way more than I do. Ex first off, one of the hardest games to teach people that are new to the hobby are stock exchange games, unless they have some experience in the stock exchange themselves. Or are in some sort of, um, or ha or in the know of how it works, or in some sort of financial financial institutions. People usually run away from stock games because of their complexity. Um, but exchange really boils it down quite simple. That's uh, quite simply. You you have to make predictions, and sometimes your predictions will be nixed by the other players, and just kind of how many shares you're going to buy. And well, if you don't have enough money to buy the shares you planned on, you have to sell shares until you have money to buy shares. It's really, it's very engaging, uh, and it's 20 minutes, 30 if you're teaching it to somebody new, but. A stock game in 20 minutes. Bicycle really hit it out of the park with this one. They're just getting into the modern board game trend. And they they really did a great job with Exchange. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to watch a video about it or, or a playthrough, uh, just go ahead and search on YouTube for it because it, it is one of the most engaging stock games I've played. I have very little to say about it. I think it's fun. Um... We keep it in our collection because Matt likes it. Um, <laughs> I will. Um, part of the problem to me is that it's three players. This might actually be our first three-player game on the You've All Encountered. Yeah. Um, and as we've said, three plus don't last super long in our game collection unless we have people that we know are going to play this. We're going to play this with. Mm. Um, I think it's fine. I think the price point is probably really good on it. Um... It's kind of a no frills game. Oh. Number five is a game that has one of the most interesting set pieces. A lot of people call it useless. It some has call a point. It a toy. Some call it a toy. Uh, it's Everdell by Starling Games. Uh, and of course, the piece I'm talking about is the giant tree. Uh, and this is an 8.125. Um, my thoughts on the giant tree, because everyone's always saying things about it. It's unnecessarily necessary. It kind of holds the giant stack of cards in place. It holds your pieces, uh, your, your f uh, next workers in place there. You have uh, goals that are there as well. So when people look at this and go, that tree does nothing, kind of, but it also does this. It's an ease of use for the game. Everdell is... When I first heard about it, I was like, okay, you know, it, oh, it's a worker placement game. Sure. But, but then when I started reading the rules, it's a worker placement game where you gain workers at your pace and you can be done long before somebody else. And, of course, the cute artwork and the theme is you're, you're a bunch of animals in the forest trying to make uh, your own little cities. Um, you like it more than I do. So why don't you talk about it? I do. I the course of theme really sells this one. Andrew Bosley's uh, immensely adorable artwork also sells it. The adorable little animeeples. Um, I we you know what Matt was saying. I really do like that um, 
you're moving at your own pace. There's really no rounds or turns necessarily. Um, uh, James A. Wilson is the designer. Ah, okay. Um, That's what I wanted to get. And you're, I mean, it's worker placement, but there's tableau building as well. And then the switching out, you know, comboing of the cards, which I really like. Um, one thing I do not care for are those weird berries. <sighs> I had this problem with Tidal Blades, and I'll talk about it again with the Tidal Blades oranges. They're which fun. remind me of the berries in Everdell. They just feel really weird to my fingers. They're weird. I love the color. Excuse me, but they're weird. And we did not do... Oh, excuse me. The um, two newest ex expansions, yeah. Spider... Spire... Spire Crest and Belfair. Excellent. Wow. We're I'm the one who who's in a game store most of the time. Yeah. Um, so this to me I think was a Kickstarter bloat expansion problem for us. It's really neat to see that when all the boards are put together it looks like a turtle. Yes. Yes. Um maybe someday we'll acquire those two expansions, but for right now I feel like we've played Pearl Book once. So and and from what I've heard, too, and correct me if I'm wrong here, the general consensus is the expansions are best with three plus. That's why I've kind of turned away from that. Oh. So. <laughs> that could be fair. And again, we don't play three plus, so super lot. So, uh, yes, Everdell is great. I know some people are probably going to be like, it's not your number one! I have one complaint about Everdell, and it's... Besides the weird berries. Besides the berries, which <laughs> I don't have a problem with. <laughs> the logs, I the also, roll. I also... Logs, yes. This, you're supposed to collect <laughs> sticks, and you try to pick them up, and they roll all over the place. So you try to have them in your little area, and they're rolling off the table. Um, and the cat's rolling them off the table. There's a... Uh, Raccoon Tycoon has has uh, the, the little wood, but it's stacked in three, so it stays in place. But these ones, I'm rolling up... Like, if Stonewall's on the table... Yeah. And Stonewall loves to like reach up with one arm and take bits away from the game as we're playing them. Those twigs fall. Oh boy. Mm. I I have no problem with the berries, and I'm actually gonna paint the leaves of the oranges in tidal blades because they need to be painted. Oh. <laughs> Number four is Elder Sign at 8.25 by Fantasy Flight Games, and we have owned Elder Sign forever. For a long time. This is uh, <laughs> Richard Lanius and Kevin Wilson designed this. This is like the speedy Arkham Horror second edition. Yes. <coughs> uh, we like Arkham Horror so much, we have the broken no. token. Elder Sign. We love Elder Sign so much that we have the Arkham Museum of Natural History broken token for It's really it. awesome. It's if, really it, awesome. If there wasn't stuff stacked on it, I'd bring it over because... It, one day I'll paint the front of it. And yeah, I mean we've played the, the heck, heck out of Elder oh, yeah. Elder Sign over the years. Um, like many games, we cool for a little bit, but we'll pick it back up usually and we pick around it back up. Halloween time. Yeah, um, or even kind of this time of year sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, it's when we got it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, have almost all of the expansions for it, or we have maybe all maybe like the nightmare packs we don't have. Yeah, so we have all of the smaller box expansions for them um you know kind of yahtzee style you are rolling dice and attempting to um solve the case i guess trying or to match seal up. away the the ancient old in the, the base game you're trying to seal away the old ones and the, the ones you're thinking about it's trying to go through locations oh yes which elder sign kind of disappeared for a little bit after it came out people played it and they're like it's fun uh, but they were kind of put off by the fact that you never left the museum and it was i think a combination of just word of mouth and tabletop show mm. with elder sign that they started coming out with these expansions okay now you're in the streets of arkham now you're in egypt you're in the arctic yeah. you're under you're in the water you know i think steve garcia might be a big fan too i think so yeah and elder sign just kind of exploded with those expansions so yeah, I mean, and one that we have a ton of content for. I'm not sure we'll ever get through all of it. Mm. Um, huge variety in characters that you can play. Oh, yeah. All 
Uh, number three is a game that just that had come out when we were getting into the hobby, and I heard about it. I didn't know who H.P. Lovecraft was. We had bought this before Elder Sign, and that's Elder Tor at an 8.375. Um, this is back when we were obsessed with games having theme, and with the with us moving into Euro gaming, we kind of started going away from that. But Elder Tor was our first Lovecraft game. Aww. And um, it definitely got me interested in reading his stuff and, and kind of understanding this world of monsters he had a part in. I wouldn't say he created all of them because I know I'll get one of them wrong, but uh, this, this mythos that, that was built around his, his writing is, is just fascinating. I know that there are a lot of problems with with his authorship, um, but to see uh, his, his mark has grown, uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with with the board game and RPG hobby. Mm. Oh, definitely. Uh, so Elder Tor is, I think I said already, eight point three seven five, published by Fantasy Flight and designed by Corey Kanesica. Could be. Um, Elder Tor, we have a lot of the things for. I don't think too we, small and too large expansions. I don't think we can fit anything else in that box. And I've looked at getting the Elder Tor crate oh. from Broken Token, and it is more than the game. Very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I shouldn't say more than the game because the Elder Sign one is more than the game too. But I think we've spent. We, if we got the crate, we would be spending more on the the crate than we've spent on the game combined with the expansions we have. Yeah, we would maybe play it more again. This is another one that we've played a lot of throughout the years. Mm -hmm. We haven't played as much. Um, still fun, though. Still fun, but I don't feel like it's one, and we just talked about this, where we have to relearn it. No, it's really A couple of rules easy. checks on combat. what you can do, combat, yeah. and stuff like that. But fine otherwise. Um, I don't know that we love it as much as Mansions or Arkham Horror anymore. It was dethroned by both of those. Um, but we still have it. We still have it and we still play it. Yeah. So, a great collection, uh, addition to our collection. Mm. Number two is Empire's Age of Discovery at an eight. Point three seven five. This is Evil Griffin Games, Glenn Drover. Um, we first borrowed this from our friend Brant, um, who you may know from the Portal Gaming Podcast and uh, their new YouTube channel. Step into the portal. Step into the portal. Thank you. I forget it every time. And we loved it. And we were lucky one year. At it was a big sale and uh, cool stuff. Gen Con, no, you? we got it at CoolStuff.com. They were having like a 50% oh. off because they had so much of it. And even with the free shipping, without being over 100, 100 bucks. And this thing is, is heavy. Um, if you haven't played Empire's Age of Discovery, but it sounds familiar, you may have played it as Age of Empires 3. Um, this Based is off the, the computer game, correct? Yes, uh, this is the reskinning of it. This one is a worker placement area control game where each of your workers, or each of your type of workers is has something different that they do and i think that's what drew us to it hmm. our cat is trying to jump into the washing machine you he's gonna be sorely disappointed okay so matt will talk about uh matt will go, maybe go get the cat um so empires i really love it's it's very low here of sorts how so perhaps i was cheap that day in my writing um the neat thing to me about Empire's Age of Discovery is the fact that your workers have, a sp each worker is different. Um, so I love that a lot. I do love the area control part. Um, and There's not as much combat in a two-player game as there is in others, but still the combat is it's fairly non-confrontational. Yes, unlike in real life. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I this one isn't talked about as much anymore. I don't feel like I think it's out of print again. Out of print again, um, and I think the whole um, colonial colonialism is not really a is, big subject right now in board gaming. It's it does touch on that, of course, um, which is a shame because the mechanics are mechanics sound wise, it's solid. a very good game. Um, we actually don't have a lot of games that are colonialism. No, that's I think that might be the only one because yeah. even our civ building game was uh, dominations, and there's nothing yeah. in that one really. 
Um, a usual Eagle Griffin, excellent quality with um, components. Um, really cool plastic coins. Plastic coins are great. Um, great variety in the meeple color. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the two expansion nations. There was, a, I think, black is Prussia, white is Denmark? Could be. So... Uh, number one is Edge of Darkness, published by AEG, designed by John D. Clare. This sits at an 8.75. Um, Edge of Darkness is the spiritual successor to Mystic Veil. What's kind of really interesting is when we got Mystic Veil on the back of the rulebook was the promotion for Edge of Darkness back in 2016, and a lot of the art changed dramatically, um, and the symbology changed in the preview. But it was basically Mystic Veil with some combat mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another game that is very mechanically sound mm -hmm. and solid. And the theme is is there because you've got these... Um, it's a, a medieval fantasy style game. You've got a cube tower where none of the cubes will rest. Uh, that's because it's got three ports sitting out and three monsters that might attack whoever has the most cubes in each one. Um, and if there's a tie, it attacks both of you, you know. Uh, and there's also neutral black cubes that attacks everybody um, in case that has the most. Uh, and you are doing card crafting. You are sending agents out on the board to get bonuses. Maybe sometimes you'll get uh, you know a slew of victory points at the library. You always love getting victory points at the library. Um, this was... AEG is still, I still think, fairly new to Kickstarter. Yes. Thunderstone Quest and Edge of Darkness kind of launched at the same time on Kickstarter. Um, you could definitely tell that um, Edge of Darkness, I think, was helped by being a Kickstarter mm. because of the content that's in there. There's a lot in the box. It's a pricey game if you can find it, but you will not be disappointed, I think. And that's my only reservation about having this one this high and that people watch this and they go out and they buy it. Definitely watch a review before you do that because it's a lot of money to put down. It is. Um, everything that Matt has said, I concur with. I love the card crafting part. Um, so it's kind of, you know, your fault of sorts if you've picked cruddy cards to put in there. And if you make your card too good, yeah. there's a possibility, because they're, they're double-sided, there's a yeah. possibility the card could actually attack you yeah. later in the game, which has happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of, co Ooh, excuse me, a lot of content in there, yeah. and... I think it's one that needs to be taught to you by yes. someone. The rule book is fine. Um, and this is another one where I got some advice from Brant at Step Into the Portal, Portal Gaming Podcast. He was like, definitely take your time with it. Because mm. there's a lot in that rule book that doesn't, it doesn't really tell you. So we did. We sat down here for about two to three hours. We took our time with it. And when we first finished when we finished that first game, we were kind of like, it's nice. Mm -hmm. But I went, throughout the day, I started and continued to think about it and what I could have done. And I was like, oh my God, this actually really is a very engaging um, game for me. I think there's infinite possibilities with the way you're building your cards. Mm. In terms of replayability, I, it, yeah. there's a lot. There's even a randomizer. Because it has kind of like a style of a campaign, but you're not going to really do all of it. It's just different scenarios for different locations you can put out to get cards. But there's also a randomizer element, too. Uh, and teaching you how to... Because it doesn't want you to randomize it and not have the synergy of using all the cards. Your favorite word. It's my favorite word. The synergy of using the cards. Uh, because you could just randomize it and put a bunch of cards out that don't do anything for you. Right. But that randomizer helps. Yes. They provided. So this one's hopefully shorter than other videos, folks. We may have talked a little bit longer on each one because we only had 10. Yes. Well, we'll see when I go to edit this. Um, what are your favorite games that begin with an E? Have you played any of these? And do you have a favorite? Ones that we really like that you do not? Ones that we think are good and you think are excellent? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time with our F games. Goodbye. Bye.